வெல்கம் வணக்கம் அண்ட் அ ஸ்பெஷல் வேர்ட் ஆஃப் வெல்கம் டு தோஸ் இன் அமெரிக்கா ஹூ வியூ த வீடியோஸ் தட் ஐ ஷேர் த்ரூ திஸ் மீடியம் ஹூ வில் பி த நெக்ஸ்ட் பிரசிடெண்ட் ஆஃப் தி யுனைடெட் ஸ்டேட்ஸ் ஆஃப் அமெரிக்கா ஐ ஆம் நாட் அ ஃபார்ச்சூன் ஃபோர் டெல்லர் ஐ ஆம் நாட் அ ஸ்டார் கேஸர் I don't practice any of the occult arts including tarot card reading or uh, astrology or whatever. I use the modicum of common sense I have and I also have a little bit of intuition. If you ask me what intuition is, I'll be hard, hard put to explain it but you and I have an idea as to what intuition is. it's a sudden shaft of light which enables you to see what till then remains somewhat vague or unclear uh and it comes like a moment of inspiration <clears throat> but it proves more often that not right and therefore i have learned to trust my intuition and uh, frankly i t- value my intuition much more than my intellect uh fortunately or unfortunately nature has endowed me with only a very small supply of intellect and maybe for that reason in order to compensate for the injustice done to me at birth nature has been more generous towards me in respect of intuition and i have to say that throughout my life intuition has stood me in great stead and therefore i can only be grateful on the balance Now, trusting my intuition, I would like to say that Kamala Harris, whom Donald Trump calls Kamala Harris, will be the next president of the United States of America. Why do I say so? <clears throat> well, there are a few reasons. Let me very quickly share some of them with you. First of all, I find it very unpleasant and distasteful to harbor the thought that Trump can return to the White House. Uh, there are, again, several reasons for it. Let me start with the religious reason. Trump is an ardent Christian who is also a compulsive liar. Now, I find this a very unacceptable reason. combination i'm happier with one who is a christian i'm happier with one who is a compulsive liar but i'm utterly disgusted with a christian who is a compulsive liar which is what donald trump is i don't want to say anything about the moral side because that's a cultural thing as well as american side concerned my moral predilections will have no bearing on how america will vote or americans will vote so i leave uh, uh, the various <coughs> juicy nuances to their consideration <clears throat> but this much is very clear it's out of the open and therefore as uh, someone who shares the faith Uh, i feel obliged to say that the most disgusting specimen of humanity imaginable in the world is a christian who is also a compulsive liar because the heart of christianity of jesus christ and jesus said he was the truth and therefore it's impossible to be a christian without an absolute and unwavering commitment to truth no matter what the cost the cross of jesus christ is the affirmation of the absolute commitment to truth unmindful of consequences whether or not christians measure up to is a different issue but i am only mentioning in passing the meaning of the cross cross is the price that a person has to pay for being steadfastly committed to truth in this world of untruth and falsehood that's why in the sanatan prayer the vedic prayer there is this beautiful moving prayer of which i have immensely fond and i have quoted that several times before lead us from untruth to truth it's so very important lead us from untruth 
truth to truth. I've also shared with you that I mean, this is again for the benefit of those who are overseas, particularly in the United States of America. Hinduism understands God as truth. God is truth. That is to say, if you remove truth from God, God will not exist. And, and therefore, I don't know how Hindus, even orthodox traditional Hindus, can tolerate post-truth politics. Again, this is another interesting phenomenon, but that's not in the main line of argument. Just like I abhor uh, Christians who are also compulsive liars, I also find it difficult to uh, reconcile myself to Hindus who are very happy or seeming to, seemingly comfortable with post-truth politics. It would be interesting to reflect on these and uh, a host of uh, uh, variants and manifestations of the same uh, pattern throughout the world and throughout history. <clears throat> so, uh, Trump, um, Trump is not acceptable to me as a Christian and therefore as a bogus Christian, he deserves rejection by everyone, beginning with Christians but everybody else because he is a religious imposter and therefore is bound to be an imposter in every other respect as well. I have nothing to do with American politics. I'm only an observer. I don't vote. I'm not a citizen of America. It doesn't matter to me materially, empirically, who becomes the president of America and who doesn't. But uh, this is where I stand. Uh, I also do not like uh, Trump's science. Somehow the tyrants of the world seem to have a penchant for science, so they think they are scientific geniuses. I can't forget the time when COVID was raging in the United States. Trump uh, uh, enlightened the entire scientific community of the United States by saying that COVID can be easily treated with detergents, either by consuming it or by injecting it. Well, he's right in the sense that that will result in the death of the patients and therefore the disease also will end. In fact, as everybody will readily agree with uh, Trump, every disease ends with the death of the patient. So, uh, I don't like uh, science of this kind. S uh, Trump's science and Trump's religion, they're entirely of a piece. They're totally consistent with each other. And therefore, the one credit I give to Trump is that he is amazingly consistent. He's as consistent in religion as he is in science, as he is in morality, as he is in international relations, so on and so forth. Uh, Trump can profess total commitment to democracy and freedom and also hobnob with the dictator of North Korea and the dictator of Russia. Now, all these are amazing feats. Um, while I recognize them from a distance, I don't want to have anything to do with them. So I'm totally convinced that Trump's return, eminently avoidable and totally abhorrent, return to the White House will be a, an absolute insult to every American, uh, even though if such a thing happens, such a self-insult is inflicted by Americans themselves and therefore they, they'll have only themselves to thank for it. But now coming to Kamala Harris, she doesn't position herself as a religious person, at least I have never heard her uh, uh, you know, showing off her religion or flaunting her religious scriptures or <clears throat> uh, symbols or whatever. Um, uh, so the fact that uh, she has a Hindu background is completely immaterial here. At any rate, if she is a practicing Hindu, that should not constitute any disqualification whatsoever unlike what the jingoes of India would feel. Uh, and I'm glad that Americans don't think uh, in those lines. Uh, I'm particularly happy that she is uh, the child of an immigrant. immigrant. Uh, Americans know, unlike Indians, that uh, every American is virtually an immigrant. It depends on when the immigration happened. Um, Almost the whole of Europe 
uh, all, all of America is either from Europe or from Africa or from Asia or from other places. The native Indians were all eliminated by the incoming immigrants, uh, the Red Indians so on and so forth is a tragic story. The others who have come, they have come because of slave trade, that's uh, the uh, 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 sad story, uh, the very, uh, very stirring story of African Americans. I'm, I'm glad that they are, uh, they have done well. Uh, of course, they can improve their position a lot better. That will happen because what happens in history is a suppressed and exploited race. Once they are given opportunities, at least once they're liberated from the handicaps uh, 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 that they uh, they had to uh, endure, they will value the opportunities available to them far greater than the opportunities enjoyed by people for centuries. And through their hard work, enthusiasm and excitement, they'll outstrip others. So the days are not far off when the national preeminence will no longer rest with the Caucasians, the whites. Uh, it will be shared by Africans and Asians. It's bound to happen because that's the poetic justice of history. And uh, more than uh, beyond that, I also need to reckon the fact that America's intellectual, cultural, economic, political, and spiritual dynamism is because it's a salad bowl of cultures, religions, and peoples. Um, and America has welcomed people from all parts of uh, all, 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 all areas of the world, all continents of the world, and it continues to do so, even though uh, a great deal of uh, anxiety-ridden intolerance towards immigrants is now rising in America, mainly fueled by the Orthodox Republicans and the far extreme uh, right-wing uh, elements in American life and politics. So uh, I'm particularly encouraged that the daughter of an immigrant, first generation, uh, um, sorry, second generation immigrant, uh, is getting this tremendous opportunity and uh, kudos to the people of America that they can rise above this kind of jingoistic negative instincts and hail the daughter of a, a, an immigrant a, a, as the candidate for the foremost office in the United States of America. Now, compared to this, I doubt if we as Indians have reached a similar level of mental and cultural liberation. We are still stuck somewhere with uh, uh, two thirds of our mind. We are stuck somewhere in the distant tribal past and therefore, it's very easy to discredit someone on the basis of some foreign uh, connection, foreign connection, even though at the same time, far more than the Americans, we are in love with everything foreign. Foreign goods, most welcome. Foreign people of promise, not at all. Unless they are merely showcases, uh, showpieces for our own vested interests. This kind of hypocrisy needs to be named, recognized and renounced. So, um, uh, Barack Obama uh, had the opportunity and he proved his mettle and uh, now it's uh, Kamala's turn. That, uh, the, the, the third reason why I uh, feel very strongly that Kamala will be the next president of the United States is that she is a lady of merit. She will win not because she is of Asian origin but she is a person of individual merit. I happened to listen to her speech at the Democratic uh, Convention in Chicago, uh, nomination convention in Chicago, and I think she did creditably well. Uh, when Donald Trump speaks, you get the feeling that there is a touch of wishy-washiness about it. But to the extent that I have heard Kamala Harris, she's sincere in every word she says. She's not a great rhetorician. She doesn't sweep people off their feet with their oratorical powers, unlike our beloved Prime Minister Siddharth Damodar Das Modi Das. She speaks with deliberation in chiseled, polished language. She 
picks and chooses her words with great care. She thinks on her feet. She is clear and concise in her expressions. And she is absolutely earnest in what she says. All of these come together only in the case of a person of truth and sincerity. So I think that's what America wants, needs today because there has been such a large injection of pretenses, falsehood and lies into the vein of American politics that now is a time that America badly needs a shot, an injection of truth and sincerity. And I have a feeling that Kamala Harris will be able to bring that into the mainstream of American life. Um, now, Kamala Harris, unlike uh, Joe Biden, does not have a long and established track record in foreign policy. But then policy is something that you learn either before you assume office or you can also learn on the job, hands on, provided your heart is in the right place and you have the right values and ideals. And I'm fairly convinced that Kamala Harris, even if she lacks prior ample experience in foreign policy maneuvers and uh, interactions, initiatives, she's not altogether alien to it, certainly not. She has everything it takes to become a for, uh, 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 formulator, architect of sound American foreign policy. Uh, which could uh, consolidate the American influence in the global arena as well as take care of America's own security needs both at home and abroad. Um, furthermore, and this is the most important reason, Kamala Harris certainly appeals to the vast majority of women in America uh, for a cocktail of or assortment of reasons, some of which I may not appreciate, some of which I do ardently. But the fact is that she's a person to whom the women of America can connect and connect in comfort. And that is a big deal because women play a far more important and decisive role in the electoral fortunes of American politicians than they do in India. They decide on their own without being unduly influenced by propaganda as to who is in the best position to protect their interests and therefore whom they should support. And by now, I believe, though Kamala is a latecomer into the electoral fray, by now she has reached out to and convinced a lion's share of the American female or women voters and therefore she has already covered great grounds and as national surveys are proving one after the other, she is now uh, on par with uh, President, uh, former President Trump, uh, whereas uh, Biden was lagging behind him by four points, four percentage votes. She has already made up for the gap. And I'm sure that in the days ahead, in the remaining days before the elections in November, she will outstrip Trump. And uh, if there is an opinion survey coming out within the next fortnight, I can assure you that the results will show that Kamala Harris is ahead of Donald Trump by at least two percentage points. This is my prediction. I'm not a syphologist. That's why I'm, why I'm likely to get it right. I use my intuition. Uh, I, I, I'm, uh, my intuition tells me that she has now uh, knows the head of Trump. Now, finally, I think it's high time that American public life, American culture, American politics in particular, American powerhouses, get a touch of the mother's or the woman's heart. The American culture, of which gun violence is a major symbol, is too manly, too macho to be normal. 
Um, America has been playing the role of the global policeman. And that's not entirely because America is so peace-loving. The Pax Romanica, if you really analyze it rationally, is compacted mostly of the patriarchal, man-centric, power-driven pride. America is the man on the global scene, the macho, the 56-inch chest in the global arena. Now, that's not what humanity needs. It's a different touch altogether. It's the motherly care that humanity needs. As for practicing cruelty, there are many others who are great experts. There are many tyrants available today. In fact, among the leaders, uh, there are plenty of tyrants. Uh, besides that, a vast majority of them have tyrannical instincts. If they're not tyrants, it's because they simply cannot afford to. So it's not uh, one more manifestation of the same malady that we need. It's the heart of a woman that humanity needs globally. It's a caring, healing touch that humanity needs at this very tortured and troubled times. And I think a woman in the office of the President of the United States, there's also a symbolic statement that the people of America can look beyond their addiction to the macho culture and value the tender uh, qualities of humanity, care, compassion, um, the spirit of service, uh, the sense of uh, being together, being with each other rather than domination, uh, destruction, um, attack, violence, conflict. Um, so I, I, have a, I, have a, I have a feeling that Americans deserve better and that can be realized only with Kamala Harris of the two candidates, Kamala Harris in the White House rather than Trump in the White House. But if Americans are hell-bent on punishing themselves, if they cannot live without insulting themselves, then they are free to choose uh, the other option. Uh, <clears throat> what actually made me turn decisively against Trump as a political option is the mayhem that he created in order to cling to the office. The January 6th episode in the Capitol. No civilized society, no society that cares for the rudiments of democracy should tolerate it. A person who cannot accept the popular vote, the popular verdict, and a person who insists that he must be allowed to retain the office irrespective of what the people want in a so-called democracy is either a rogue or a madman. Either way such a person should be unacceptable. For the life of me, I cannot believe that a person who choreographed the January 6th mayhem in the capital can again be trusted with the preeminent office of the foremost nation in the world a nation that the Pilgrim Fathers imagined way back as a city set on a hill that is meant to give light to all the world. Imagine the glorious vision with which the Founding Fathers of the United States of America began their twist to destiny. America is a city sit on, set on a hill and it must give light to all the world. Is it doing so? Well, your guess is as good as mine. Thank you. Goodbye for the present.